the first thing I'm going to say is it might be a good idea to look through some magazines and books of flowers that you like or you can buy a fresh bouquet of flowers that that's always a really nice thing to do and think about them in a composition then you can take just a little book and create a little sketch of how you want to set up the composition on your watercolor paper it's called a thumbnail sketch that's always a good idea to to do something like that the other thing I'll comment on for those of you that do not have draw, strong drawing skills take a look through magazines and books as I mentioned and when you see a flower that you like look at the outside shape of the flower don't worry so much about all the details that are within those lines but just you know look at the outside shape and then I want you to draw that on a piece of cardstock and cut it out so you end up with something like this all right and then in the center you can go back to the center of the flower if that's one of the things that let's say attracted you to the to the to the image and if you actually just follow your pencil along the outside line you'll realize it's just a series of squiggly lines all right so that's your center and then there's a little button right in the center here surrounded by all the stamens okay so that gives you a template look through other pages and find different shapes it doesn't even matter whether they're all in the same family by the time you end up cutting out different shapes and you paint them they all look like they're they belong to uh, you know they belong in the garden together so I'm gonna put my book aside <clears throat> and what I've done although I talked to you about not using an HB pencil it's a bold line I did draw this one out uh, using that just so that you could um, see that through the camera lens I find the finer lines are harder for you to see so I've placed that there and then I took some other templates that I used and I've placed them in a couple of other areas I have taken a I'll just do this again I have a maidenhair fern sitting close by and I took that leaf and have drawn some of the shapes of these leaves in a couple of areas when you actually have a leaf like this on hand you can actually lay it on your work and think about where you want to place um, the the leaves okay so that's a that's another little trick I also have a different plant here that has a wider leaf and I can pull that off there it's a wider leaf so and a smaller one so it's the same idea you can either make a template of it or use the leaf but I've made a couple of templates here as well but I'll draw those in later so I've got enough actually drawn on the watercolor paper to get started so let me just lift uh, actually you know what I'll do I'll just show you how I draw the um, around the templates so you'll see or get the idea of how I do this all right so there's one two three I'm going to set them all to the side a few more up there okay and I'll put my pencils aside watercolor tray I uh, wet it I did wet all the the wells again they were I was talking to you about that in the pretty previous um, clip and so you can see that everything is quite fluid I've mixed up a little bit of green in this section of my uh, palette this is my hookers green Antwerp blue and what I do is I drag a little bit of those onto this section and pick up the aureolin and the burnt sienna and that creates my green color. Now, a couple of different techniques um, available to you in uh, watercolor and you're going to have to play with a couple of techniques to see which one you're most comfortable with. There's a technique that's called wet into wet and what that means is you simply wet the area of the watercolor paper and you drop water in in that in that particular area and let it soak into the paper the paper will stay wet and then what you can do is pick up pigment and then drop the pigment into this wet area and it kind of travels which is quite pretty quite interesting to see the method that I use most of the time is called wet into dry the reason that I like that is I like rich pigments and I find they are less diluted if I put pigment into a dry surface but I'm going to demonstrate both and you can play with both and see which one you are most comfortable with so let's just get started and I'm going to use my brush as a mop and 
put that in. And I'm just going to work around the center of the of the um, the flower, the center of the flower. If the watercolor puddles heavily in any one area, you can move it around or use your brush as a mop and mop it up because you want it fairly evenly distributed, the water. Okay. So I'm just going to tap off the water on my brush. And just like I said, I'm just going to go back with a fairly dry brush and just pick up some areas that are just a little bit um, or where they're puddling a little bit. Okay. <clears throat> okay. So the flower color that I'm going to use, or uh, the, col the, the color that I'm going to do this flower is permanent rose, beautiful color. And I'm going to pick up a little bit of the cobalt. So I've got a nice mauve color there. I'm just going to rinse my brush out in one of the containers here and pick up a little bit of indigo. So I've got three colors sitting there, okay? So that gives me some flexibility in what I drop into this area. This will stay quite wet for a while depending on, you know, the environment that you're working in. If you're working outside, that would dry up very quickly. Inside on a day where the temperature in your house is not too warm, it'll stay wet for quite a while, so. All right, so I'm just going to mix the colors on my palette. I like to see what the color is before it comes over here onto the paper. So I'm just going to drop it in kind of randomly. to the edges here. <coughs> Maybe just put a little bit more in here and there. Now I'm going to rinse my brush out. Just water on my brush. Try that again. It's just water. Okay. And I'm going to just touch the edges of where I put that color in. When I say touch the edges, just like you're watching me, just touch the edge where the color has left off. I'm just moving. I'm just manipul manipulating it a little bit with a very light hand. Do not press down too hard on your on your paper. When it's wet like that, the fibers will start to break down if you're really scrubbing. So when you put color in, try not to go back in and touch it too many times. All right. So that one's done. <clears throat> now I'm just going to draw in the center of this flower and I'm going to work wet into dry same color okay so maybe I'll just add a little bit of um, French ultramarine pick up a bit more of the permanent rose and this one's going to be just a little bit brighter pink maybe than that one so this is wet into dry so what I have to be mindful of when I work wet into dry is these outside edges, they will dry fairly quickly, so I'm constantly going back between this side and this side over here. Okay, so I'm picking up some more. My brush is quite saturated with water when I do an application like this. Alright, and I'm just moving it around now. Just a little bit of color here now. And again, it's just a really light hand that I'm that I have when I'm working. Also, I'm only putting pigment on the tip of the um, the brush. You're not you don't have to load the whole brush with paint like like um, uh, you know like when you're painting a wall, let's say. All right, so there's the second flower, and I think I'll go ahead and I'm just going to pick up a bit stronger pigment if I can to dry my brush out. If I want a stronger pigment, you, I have to go into the little the little dollop of pure pigment that's sitting on the side. It's less it's um, got less water on it and I'm going to get a nice thick paint and I'm going to so I'll have to just think about where the center of that flower is. So I'll just do that. So this is much 
much deeper color. And I just am trying to create a variety between the three of them. So now I'm going to rinse off my brush. Well, you can see that there's still a little bit of color on my brush, but again, I'm just going to tease the edges and pull. I'm just pulling the pigment into the area I want it to travel to. So, all right, and then I can just come back up with my brush like a little bit of a mop and just come back into that area, but with a very light hand. So there, I've got three flowers done. I'm gonna let them dry before I do anything else to them. When I work, I use a pencil to draw out my work, but I do minimal drawing. And what I often do, or quite most of the time, in fact, I do this, when a surface is dry, I would go back in and then do drawing again. So I might draw out the petals of, of the flower. So it's a process of going, doing the drawing, then painting, then drawing a little bit more, and then painting, and so forth. So. All right, so the little leaves, we'll tackle those now. And the, let me just get a smaller brush. I'll take a couple of brushes, in fact, because what I'm going to be using is I'm going to have a, a nice green mixed up here. So I'm just, what I'm doing, like when I pick up the color, I'm putting it down, and then I'm just dragging my brush through the edges of the Aureolan as a yellow and the Burnt Sienna. So I'm just picking up a little bit of those colors till I see something that I like. So this is a green that I, I, that I like. So I'll leave that and change brushes. And I'm going to then go over to um, uh, French Ultramarine and a little bit of Indigo. And I'm then going to just take a little bit of the green and put it in here and it just makes it a little grayer. It's a little grayer blue then. All right, so now I'm coming over here wet into dry again. So I'm just going to put a little bit of that blue in. All right, like that. The green is on my brush, so I'm just going to touch the edges of that blue and put that in. And I'll rinse off my brush and just pick up a little bit of the aureole and the yellow. And just again touch the edge of the, the, um, the green that was put in. Rinse out my brush. Now just water on my brush and I'm just touching that edge again. And what happens, the water pushes the color away so you get a nice little highlight. So I'll do that again. I pick up the blue. And these are just random shapes that I'm putting in where I um, where I'm, and I'm laying in the color, the blue, the yellow, green. So now it's the green. All right, and I'll rinse out the brush that's holding the blue color. And then here's the yellow again. Just touching the edge. And water. Okay, so I am going to do that in a larger version just so you can see that more clearly.